Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Some new faces on the desk for you. I'm your host, OG Susano, joined by my co-caster, Cash. We're here to bring you the action for the rest of the night. So get wrapped in, get your popcorn, get your water, whatever beverage of your choice, because we're going to bring it in live. Cash, how you doing? I'm doing well. I'm excited for these next two matches we have. We just had a really good one prior with Cruz and Seymour, and yeah, we're in for a good night. Yeah, we've got two very, very notable schools. We've got the University of Wisconsin versus Minnesota State University in Mankato. It's going to be an exciting time with some exciting gameplay. Let's talk about a little bit about these head-to-head -head stats that we've got right now. Yeah, having a look at, um, you know, starting with Wisconsin and, and the head-to-head -head and both of them ultimately, Wisconsin sitting at nine and one overall, eleven and two in hard point, nine and two in search and destroy, and seven zero in control. And on the flip side, only one map dropped for Maverick Esports, so looking a little bit better in the head-to-head -head comparison. But interesting note for Wisconsin in the control, they are seven and zero. Oh, five of those seven matches have gone to around five, so a little bit closer when you really start to look at these games, and that's going to be interesting as we get to that third game mode eventually tonight in this match. But if you are Maverick Esports, sitting comfortably at one map drop, and uh, sure, that was last night that you dropped your first map of the season, but you're looking to keep things rolling. Oh, yeah, and let's talk about our home team because we got to see who we've got going up against tonight. From the side of Wisconsin, we've got Key, Puck, Matrix, and Super Sherm. These guys will be our home team from the University of Wisconsin. Wisconsin Cod looking pretty good. And like you said, Cash, Maverick Esports just being just a slightly bit better in terms of the head-to-head -head that we saw earlier. So I'm going to be interested to see if maybe Wisconsin Cod can, you know, have that underdog factor when, you know, an underdog factor isn't really needed when the stats are so close. Definitely. I'm looking at Key for Wisconsin as their yeah. kind of main hard point slayer, uh, uh, takeover person in the response for sure. But I mean, if you want, at the end of the day, if you want a team that's sitting at nine and one like Wisconsin is, you need a team that all four players can show up in. And that's exactly what they have with this Wisconsin roster. So though I'm looking at Key to kind of pop off here early in this hard point, we know all four players are going to show up. Oh, yeah, especially against the side of Maverick Esports. Let's look at that roster for our away team. From the side of Maverick Esports right now, starting in player one to player four, we've got Spur Up, Bladesy, White Dog, and T Bamith, or T Bamith, however you want to pronounce that one. These are our current reigning stat champs in terms of this matchup. And I'm like very excited to see what just what type of team chem the Mavericks are going to be bringing to the table tonight. Absolutely. Why dog for the squad is going to be their most consistent player. I, I think through and through night in and night out, that's who I'm going to be looking at to really have the most consistent stat line throughout this entire series, regardless of map or mode. And all three other players have shown throughout the season, they can interchangeably pop off. Sometimes it's, you know, one other player with Y dog. Sometimes it's the whole team. So, so once again, you have a team that's sitting at 10 and 0 like Maverick, of course, all four players are going to be solid, but White Dog and then, you know, maybe another player going to pop off tonight for him. Is it going to be a well-balanced effort or is it just going to be a couple of people really leading the way? That's what we'll find out tonight. I love that about the information. And let's see what their efforts are going to lead us on our roadmap for the maps tonight. Because it is going to be an interesting setup with different locations with uh, only one map repeating. And that's going to be from our first map on Hardpoint in Tuscan. And we're going to hop over to a Desert Siege. I know I'm excited about that one. Uh, then we'll be hopping to our third map, Control onto Tuscan. And if we do get to a map four, it'll be a Bocage Hardpoint, my personal favorite. Then lastly, in the map five, should we reach that distance, is a Berlin Search and Destroy. I don't know about you, Cash, but personally... Desert Siege is one of those that maps that I just cannot wait to see more of. And I'm glad that it's our map two instead of our map five, as per usual. It's going to be interesting to see how teams often play that. We don't see all that many reps on it, at least, you know, on broadcast between teams. And so, yeah, like you said, usually that one gets pushed a little further down the series chain. But we're going to get this one 
in our first search and destroy of the evening and i'm excited for it both teams i mean at nine and two and nine and one respectively in search and destroy that's going to be interesting somewhat evenly matched there but really at this initial hard point that we're looking at in tuscan i'm looking for mavericks to take that take that they're sitting at 14 and 0 and oh really yeah it's their game to take yeah, they are our current leaders in respawn, so I'm expecting some big turnips from the side of Maverick. That's why I said earlier, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the team cam is like. And with a map like Tuscan, and especially in a mode like Hardpoint, team cam and teamwork are really what shines and gets us into that one. And talking about the game, let's load into it. Why not? Because the players are ready. I know we're ready, Cash, and let's get it going. Really excited to kick this one off, Tuscan. One of the best hardpoint maps that we have here, just with the rotations and, and different things. Slaying can also be super prevalent in the mid map. Just so many different areas. You can play scrappy, or you can also kind of use those longer lines of sights to get information and make rotations for the team. But really, if you're Wisconsin to take this one off the rip, you're going to have to win those key gun fights that go down on rotation and transition. You know, this team's undefeated. You know they're not going to come in and mess around on the side of Maverick Esports, so you've got to come out just as serious and just as ready to go. And of course, we haven't touched on to the, you know, playoff implications, different standing implications here. Both squads playing for first and second tonight, respectively. But if you're Wisconsin COD, of course you want that top seed, and you want to come out and show tonight why you deserve to be here. Exactly, love that out of them. Hopefully they can show up. But immediately right off the bat, Maverick Esports will be in control of the site. You can see immediately right now, Spur Up and Co just had a nice little break and are currently leading. You know, Cash, every time we get to this P1 on the first rotation, I feel like it's more of a one-sided battle, if anything. It really is the left side of the map spawns. Those are obviously critical because you get mm -hmm. to the hill just a bit quicker. And then if you're the right-hand side, you're just hoping to keep it mixy, not let the lead get too crazy. And really keep those right-hand side of the map spawns. And if you're Wisconsin, you've unfortunately Ooh. done neither. Maverick Esports are going to go up 36-0, about 45 off this first hill. And they were able to flip out spawns. Now you do get them back if you are Wisconsin. And so on this rotation, you need to have a good setup. But... You're down 45 points after the first hill, and just that's just not a way you want to start. Exactly, and it's like I was saying, it feels like it's one-sided, and Maverick Esports will be the current holders of our score. And you see right here, Matrix, very nicely done. Like you said, they just wanted to keep it mixy from the side of Wisconsin, make sure that they're not losing too much time. And currently, it's paying off with just a nice setup from all around. AR's doing the work, but White Dog. He did was able to make a bit of a difference there, but as immediately as he was able to pop in, he was taken out. So right now we hop in with Sherm, who currently is facing Bladesy and Spur up, and that's a four down, a little four for one trade. And Maverick are now going to be back on the hill, even though it is 20 minutes of 20 seconds of scrap. It's still a good amount in terms of the long scheme. It's a good amount of scrap time they're able to walk away with, and if you're Wisconsin, you only get 20 seconds off that. So Maverick kept it really contested, and. Yeah, Matrix was able to go on six, but right now, Key, the one respawn slayer I was looking to keep my eye on, sitting at one and seven. So definitely not a preferred or favorable start. Going to look to keep an eye on that performance, see if Key can start to turn things around. But this break for Wisconsin is going to look to try to come in from the top side as Maverick Esports spawning roof. And with two people up and two still coming out of the back, this might be a delayed hit. And with a staggered push, it's just going to be a clean wipe for Maverick Esports. Yeah, exactly. And that 14-0 and 0 clearly being very prevalent here. Uh, immediately two sites already being dominated by the side of maverick esports that was a nice four down but we've got a bit of a trade-off coming here in the middle tbm is unfortunately was not able to win that one but you have when you have white dog on the rear he can immediately come in for the support and puck while he's fighting onto the side bladesy he's just moving around pretty cracked and well, Sherm, he's going to be able to just hop in there. And right now we hop into the rotation because it looks as though Maverick Esports are ever so presently closer to breaking that 100-point threshold. They've won every rotation except for P2, but even then they were able to break in with 20 seconds of scrap time left and still make the rotation over to P3. So Maverick Esports playing a very solid hard point to start here. It's Wisconsin who needs to make an adjustment and try to win a rotation. And, of course, that starts with winning the key gunfights that are on rotation right now they're in the hill early but it's just not gone smoothly and favorably for them every time they can kind of get a foot in the door and really start to find some footing it's maverick esports already knocking on the door trying to get back in and that's exactly what we're seeing here they're going to get two down in the feed but the other two are going to work a front and side pinch and it's going down here so we're going to see how it works out 
Exactly, and you saw right there immediately, Maverick Esports, they had a good, pretty, well, decent break, but uh, Wisconsin, with the, without spawns for the side of Maverick, were just able to just relentlessly get back onto the hill. So, Maverick will get a bit of this scrap for now, but Wisconsin definitely won the majority of that hill, and Matrix, he's the only one able to rotate here, hops in, and he's able to take out White Dog, but is immediately chowed by Bladesy. Bladesy been such a, a key player for the side of Maverick this game. And it's clearly showing when he's 15 and 8 on a three streak right now. And close to a minute in the hill. Spirit playing the cutoff at mid-map and not letting these players get any bit closer through mid to try and get over to P5. His two players are just sitting nice and cozy there. Why dog sitting at the cutoff for when these players decide to come through and make a move. Gonna have the cutoff there. Maybe a push coming through bottom. But as long as Blazy's standing there now on four... There's not going to be much oh going down goodness. for you now on a five streak. Jeez. And I was about to note, you know, for Wisconsin, he who was one and uh, seven, now nine and 15. So uh, a turnaround of sorts, but without winning rotations, it's just not amounting to anything. Yeah, they got a decent hold on P4, but every time you look up at the mini map, it's Maverick Esports who can afford to send a couple people on rotation to get the next hill secured. So Wisconsin, though they're able to find some footing, maybe a touch more in the slaying department, still a little lopsided. Just unable to get the rotations around the map. This might be their best look here at P1, but they've got to win these gunfights. Exactly, and Spur had a nice little spree there towards the middle of church, just that last hill, and was able to get full streaks. But you do see Spur up, unfortunately, was not able to get some uh, help right there in terms of the hill. But Bladesy, he's been doing some pretty great shots indeed. And by right now, as we head into the second set of rotations, Currently, Maverick once again are just in charge as now they have a hundred point threshold over the side of Wisconsin. It's just cohesive pushes from the side of oh, yeah. Maverick. There haven't been staggered pushes, haven't been one-off pushes. And even if maybe someone gets to the hill a little bit quicker, they just know the positioning that they're in on the map where these players are coming from. And you see them every life taking down one, two players at least before they go down. So Wisconsin are just unable to trade out effectively and now where we see them going four for one in the feed they are going to get the rest of the scrap time finally cross that 100 point mark but with players baiting and switching double challenging like that all four coming through plat this should be a quick p2 break yeah, and talk about cohesive movements what a great reach out that was towards the top mid there and it's really showing off i like how you said cohesive because they're moving together like a unit and this is what all teams should be aspiring to do whether it be from here in the ccl or even towards the pros this is just great team cam and great teamwork overall and clearly maverick already close to breaking that 200 point threshold are just leading the charge very well only needing about 55 points to win and take this first map and remain undefeated in hardpoint. That's what Maverick's looking to do. And just like that, on the rotation, you see two players at this P1 cutoff going to find this one player for Wisconsin and try to get the kill. But even if they don't get a super clean kills on transition, they're definitely making it mixy. And oh my gosh, what? able to possibly get both rotations. I thought it was going to be pulled off there, but both guns out of ammo. As I was saying, they just don't make the transition clean for Wisconsin. So even if it's a little bit mixier for them than what they'd like, they're still able to walk away with it because they can afford to send more resources over to the new hill given that they're up 100 points and really comfortable in their hard point setups around the map, especially on a map like Tuscan where once you get in your grooves and your rotations, it's very hard to break that cycle in Wisconsin. They just don't have the answers. Exactly. Maverick know the beat of the tune. And, well, they're singing it to us right now with 222. Happy Tuesday, by the way. And uh, we've got 112 for the side of Wisconsin. And they also still have full streaks for two sides. And a low four for one trade ain't too bad for the side of Wisconsin to get the remainder of this hill. But with streaks being in full effect and haven't been used, I'm a little bit worried for the side of Wisconsin. And Maverick, well, they will be able to hold a bit of this time, a bit of a contest here from Puck. But, hey. You get the rotation. You're already looking pretty well on this next hill. I'm, it's safe to say this might be the last one. About 15 seconds left. It could very well be. It's going to need to be a quick and clean hit from Wisconsin in order to get in. And seeing the two closest drop in the kill feed, it's not going to make it much easier. Like you said, streaks on either side. And Ooh. it's going to be Maverick calling it in. They're trying to put this one away here. So knowing the resources they have, knowing when to use them and... Now just being 10 seconds away, you just gotta hold off one more wave. Exactly, you gotta hold off and ever so present, Maverick's teamwork coming in big and 
with some streaks. That's going to seal the deal. 250. 151 there. And, well, Maverick really show, or actually 131, excuse me. Maverick Esports really showing us why they're undefeated in Hardpoint. And uh, what a beautiful map indeed. While Wisconsin was not club, they definitely felt it in terms of rotation. I know you mentioned it earlier, Cash, but Wisconsin Cod just were not able to get it going. While they did get some mixiness on the map, they weren't able to, you know, really solidify a dominant path. And I like how you mentioned also the, you know, the momentum of players, because let's look at these stats right now. You look at the momentum from the side of Maverick, and I immediately look at Spur Up. 31 and 15, 23 non-traded kills. And look at that, a minute and 12 on the hill. Definitely an all-around great player for the side of Maverick. Great performance coming out from that squad, and they find good success whenever the, you know, slang and stat lines look fairly even. And though some people, of course, had more kills, more heal times than others, across the board, it was a well-given performance from the team in Wisconsin. Though maybe they were able to pick up the slang between a couple of players that had slow starts. When you're not winning rotations, especially on a map like Tuscan, you just can't get away with that. So. Hopefully in their respawns, they figured out a bit better. And of course, fortunately for Wisconsin, because they were losing their rotations, maybe Bokaj will kind of give them a better leg if we can get out to map four. Maybe that'd work out in their favor, but I'd like to see them really tighten that up. Try to find a way between here and map number four if they can push it the distance that way to figure something out in their respawns. Maybe they just knew it was slow starts and they just found themselves in a cycle. But regardless, Maverick Esports still find themselves now at 15-0 in hard point and for very good reason. Yeah, 15 and 0 now on the hard points. And uh, I, I like that you said that, you know, maybe Bokaj is that a little bit more of a relentless, you know, battleground in terms of our hard points. And I agree, it's a, it's a very much a scrapyard. Gloves off and fisticuffs all around. You know, hopefully, maybe that's Wisconsin style. And if it is their style, then I'm definitely a little bit worried for them when we hop into this desert siege. Desert siege, well, I can get a little mixy towards the middle within that main building. It is a much more methodical map where ARs and snipers are your way. And let's hop in to our maps for right now because you look at it immediately. Maverick took that first map at a pretty dominant 250, 131. And Desert Siege, Cash, yeah, like I said, it's just going to be a little bit more methodical. Hopefully, Wisconsin Cod have the pacing for it. Hopefully, they do, especially on retakes if you get the site down and give up another being able to play the retakes but more importantly you mentioned the stat line that spur up it had for mavericks you've got to be able to trade more effectively than what we've seen so far and of course a respawn plays at a slightly different pace than s and d still have to be able to just stress and know on the side of wisconsin the f importance of first bloods but not only that getting the first blood and playing your life it's one thing to get a first blood and get traded but if you can really get a kill and get out with your life that just adds so much more value to the round for your team it makes it that much easier for you to potentially walk away with the win and against a team like maverick esports this is a squad who their first map loss was in search and destroy and that was last night so if you are mavericks again you're guaranteed top two whether you win or lose tonight but they've shown vulnerability right they've shown that they can be taken down in a search and destroy setting so wisconsin need to recognize that and capitalize on the fact that hey they have a chink in the armor. They've taken a loss in search and destroy, and let's take advantage of yeah. that. They need to be able to recognize and do that, and hopefully with VOD review and different things, they're ready coming into this one. Yeah, and with only a map difference in terms of S and D, you know, in terms of stats, you, know, you have Wisconsin there nine and two, but then you also have Maverick, like you said, losing their first map the other night, nine and one. Uh, I think this is going to be a very interesting one from both sides, with these stats being. The closest we've seen besides, you know, our control, which will be our third map, which is, uh, you know, both teams are currently 7-0 and oh on. That'll be a true scrap yard for both. But I, I am definitely having a bit of a, of a, you know, a seed of worry, if you will, uh, for the side of Wisconsin because Maverick, their teamwork really showed that first map. And while Wisconsin tried their best, you know, it, it just wasn't enough. And when you have a juggernaut versus a, you know, a, a cruiserweight, it's going to be a bit of a hard one to try and overcome. What do you think, Cash? It is a definite challenge to overcome, and I have my eyes so focused on the search and destroy because, again, that's the only place that uh, Maverick Esports has really shown any kind of a slip-up or weakness. Now, if you are Wisconsin, you suffered a game five loss 
to Iowa um, a while back, and that Game 5 loss was in a 6-0 fashion, but that series was where they lost both of their S&Ds, so they haven't dropped many S&Ds since then, of course, with that being the only two that they have lost, so you know they took that Game 5 loss and really went to work on it, so they have shown improvement, they have shown upward trajectory as far as this mode goes, and if this is going to be one that they're going to take, or if, if it's one that they want to take, it's going to be this one here. Maybe they can hang with the respawn and the likes of, like I said, Bocage, something that, you know, is a little less punishing if you don't rotate, or even on the control, but really this Desert Siege is where it starts for me in Wisconsin, and again, of course, a little bit hotter performances from those key players out of the team, and key, you know, of course, being a respawn heavy player, you still have the other three that can step up here and search and destroy possible implications of a sniper coming out but again this is just a focal point in my eyes that if wisconsin want to take a mode to give themselves life in the series it needs to be where maverick esports have shown weakness and that's going to be in search and destroy yeah exactly this map is going to be a benchmark let's hop in because the players are ready so let's show a, a oh actually we got word that the lobby actually dropped hey it's call of duty ladies and gentlemen you know it, it there's always going to be some sort of issue, but hey, that's what makes it exciting, you know? And I'm talking about exciting, let's give you guys, you viewers at home, a little bit of a break. Go get your water, go get energized, because this next map, like Cash Chat, is going to be a benchmark, and I want you to be ready for it. So we'll see you in just a bit. All right, welcome back. We're now live with this map to Desert Siege. We're here with Puck, who's got the sniper out essential for this map and uh it's gonna get real nice and mixy here cash and immediately we already see a two down make that three make that three and <laughs> yeah now it's gonna be super sherm last one left with the bomb just this player's about to collapse all around the site know exactly where he's at it's gonna get one it's gonna look to get the second and unfortunately with still two left not gonna be able to get any more than that Quick round going to go the way of Maverick Esports here in the Search and Destroy. And they didn't see too much of that initial break off uh, on offense. It's definitely the harder one to take, whether you opt to try to get the bomb down quickly or look to play for a pick and then make a play. We'll see how each team looks to do this. But Maverick's defensive break off and presence up that train side too much this initial round for Wisconsin. Indeed, uh, Maverick very nicely done that first round. And... He did see Puck have that sniper, which was a bit of an interesting one because he wasn't able to really use it. But, hey, information given is information taken. But Wisconsin wasn't able to take the round despite all the information. But, hey, we look in right now and immediately fast plant towards B. T. Bameth finds key right off the rip. That's going to be a nice first blood. White Dog now moving in towards the spawn. I believe he did see Puck. So Spurb's going to be able to give a unilateral bit of a pick here. And that's very nicely done. Great pick from the sniper. I don't know, Cash. With me, I just love snipers so much. I I'm glad that they're back in the comp. They're so exciting to watch, especially when you just know like that one. The hit was coming. White Dog was just crowning them over that side. And Spurb was there for the pick. So now Matrix... Left in a 1v3 situation and no time to defuse a bomb. That is going to be the round. And what was a four stack over at that A site ended up biting them. The two players in mid get chopped down. Left players in an unfavorable situation. And with no time to make a move or get a retake, lives dwindled. And Maverick looked to be in control. Yeah, very nicely done from Maverick. They got that plant on site. It was very fast. And I like that. They saw... The threats were not present immediately. Opportunistic as ever. Got the bomb down. And at, at that point, it's just playing the time. And clearly, they played it to the T. So, Maverick Esports 2-0 and o currently right off the rip. And, well, Wisconsin, a bit of a lagging start. But, hey, there's plenty of rounds within the search and destroy to, to maybe make a comeback here. But, as I say that, T. Bameth once again with another great opening. But he will be traded out. Was hoping to see Wisconsin start to win or at least negate the trade battle off the first blood break, and they do just that up one life for the first time in this search and destroy. But with minimal information on where the other two players are, they just need to get another pick and get clearance on this A side to get the bomb down. So we're going to see the players work up that way. It's going to be spur up on the wraparound with the sniper behind these players and potentially unaware of it. 
Maybe Puck has an idea that Spurrup could be coming that way. Here comes the gunfight and no scope headshot. Gonna come in for Spurrup, but the player's gonna be there for the trade. So it's cool of a hit that was, as cool of a hit as that was. Uh, Wisconsin, they're able to answer back. Yeah, very nicely done, Wisconsin answering back in kind. But hey, you gotta you gotta tip it to uh, Spur up there, uh, really really you know channeling those Pomage vibes right now with a nice headshot. That was beautiful. But hey, you know Wisconsin now back up on the board. Matrix, look at him. He's on a four streak there. Very nicely done that last round, and he's gonna be eligible for some streaks here pretty soon. So if I'm on the side of Maverick right here, coming from a player background. I need to target that player to make sure that the streaks aren't able to be acquired. Wisconsin sending 1A, 1B, and 2 mid. Super Sherm. Able to get the first blood, but Blades is going to answer on his own. Puck with the sniper. Going to get Spur up off the map, and what was going to be a potential bomb plant for Wide Dog now has to be reconsidered with the pick Puck was able to make with the sniper. So Wide Dog knows he's back there. Nosey asked pillar coverage, giving up the call to his teammate. Hey, I'm getting this bomb down. 3v2 retake. Wisconsin are working through mid. And they will be working through mid, but Bladesy now with an automaton. He's watching for that rotation. White Dog, very nicely done. Reacted off that info given from earlier from Puck. But hey, nice little two-piece here. The duo makes it happen. And now a 3v2 turns into a 2v1. And with 20 seconds left on the bomb here. Matrix is going to probably, in all honesty, it's best at this point to just play off of his streaks and wait for uh, an opportunity. But as I say that, he will be taken down. Our esports now three and one. This is getting ever so present and ever so clear that, you know, the when, when they're playing together, they're playing dominantly. But when you have a round that's very spruced and, you know, patterned out like that, that second round or the third round, excuse me, uh, they will not be able to really amount to a, a round win and having a look at just some of the keys to victory that i had down for wisconsin and search and destroy was in mavericks only loss this year their downfall was being unable to trade kills and win in the first blood department so if they can continue winning in the first blood department and trading kills effectively they're gonna find success but it's just been so hot and cold for them to start and even then where they have a life's advantage they're losing it and allowing for players to turn situations on their head. So with three going down off of the break, make that all four in a clean fashion from Maverick Esports, that's a round that's just not going to go their way. So Wisconsin have to be able to understand that, hey, looking at Maverick's VOD, looking at where they slipped up, if we can trade out effectively, if we can get these first bloods, we're going to stand a chance. And the rounds where they have found first blood picks, they've looked all right in, but it's just got to be done consistently. And now you're down three rounds. Yeah, and I like how you mentioned the, the first bloods when you have T-Bameth, who out of the two of the five rounds that we've had so far, has been leading that. Well, you did have Spur up that last round, have a nice opening two-piece. They're definitely doing pretty well in that department, so they clearly know what they need to work on. And right now, it's the execution. Spur up off screen will get a nice opening shot with the sniper. That's exactly what you want out of your sniper players. But with a nice bomb down, that's going to be able to give another bit of information to go down and once again cash it just feels like when there's one or when there's one player immediately the second is found and maverick are very opportunistic when it comes to these opening shots yeah in wisconsin they've just been setting up the same off of these defensive breaks they've been sending kind of one deep a one b and then two mid, and in that mid battle, they're losing and getting picked off first, and that puts their other player kind of in a pinch situation there in the middle um, university, trying to figure out where these players are going to be coming from. So just setting themselves up in unfavorable positions to take away rounds. And if you're Maverick Esports, I know we've been talking about what Wisconsin needs to be able to come back and win, but now with it being 5-1, I mean, Maverick, they're, they're doing everything right. You know, I said that they showed weakness in the search and destroy where they lost their one map yesterday and for this they have you know more opening gunfights that they're winning they're setting themselves up in much better positions to trade teammates where they need to so if you're mavericks yeah you have the slip up last night but this is an instant turnaround oh yeah very much so and immediately nice little opening shot there and now it's back to three before and well, Wisconsin, they are currently down in the manpower. Spear up, finds the second player, tags them. Does not finish it with the rat. Matrix 
able to fight off with less than 10 HP. Very nicely done. The tenacity out of him to stay up and immediately just confidently tell that. Very nicely done. White Dog, he's going to be pinched here by two players. He does know the Sherm and immediately is going to get some help from Matrix. So White Dog will be taken down. And Sherm, well, his position is still known. So T Bamath looking towards the trenches. Looks at him and he does get some opening shots. Throws out the stun and immediately connects. Throws the nade. But immediately Matrix just being so very opportunistic gets that player from the back that's matrix with a nice rat kill it's a 2v1 and well maverick's plan there at the beginning just got flipped on their heads it did and matrix was the one who inside university had to make the play they knew like you said where sherm was out over in the dunes and just waiting for matrix to get up the stairs and get one of the players killed force these players to turn around but blaze able to pick off one the trade is going to be there so again when wisconsin are trading kills they're finding success they now find their second round win here in the search and destroy but with just one round left for maverick to take you put yourself in an unfavorable spot because you don't have any more room for error it's got to be flawless from here on out if you want to take it five straight to be exact and well if you're maverick just do what you've been doing apply pressure up middle win those initial battles in the mid map and that's how they've been taking rounds yeah, and you have Bladesy as well with a strafing run. So this is going to be an interesting one with a bit of openness on both left and right lane. Uh, that'll be great to hopefully, you know, close the distance here. But you do see T-Bamoth immediately noticing the players have already breached into this middle building. So they will have securing, they will be, will be able to secure that one. Sherm, though, does notice White Dog is in his familiar position from the last round towards the trenches. And... You have a nice two-piece from T-Bamoth. He had that information, reacted off of it, and was able to capitalize. But White Dog, well, he's going to be stuck in the back. But Spur Up, he's using this information to the T. He'll get one player. Looking for the last one. That's Matrix. Gets the snap, but not able to tag. And it's going to be a bit of a cat and mouse fight for the Wisconsin player, Matrix, against Maverick Esports. It's a 3v1. And Matrix is just stuck in the side of the map. And there's going to be Maverick player just waiting, challenged from the top truck. And that's going to be a very dominant search and destroy win from Maverick Esports. They now go up 2-0 in this series and looking to secure that top seed in this pool. They didn't want any question. Yeah, we showed a slight sign of weakness, if that's what you want to call it. Maybe a fluke there last night. But we're here to show that our game plays tight. We know what we're doing, and we're already making improvements. Yeah, let's let's look at the improvements indeed on the stats really quickly. Uh, look over to the side of Maverick Esports. You have a pretty similar median on the terms of the kills. Uh, you have a six kills from T. Bamath, but they were very, very strongly done. Four out of those six were first bloods, and then you had Blazy with four first bloods as well. That is just great to see out of them. So out of every round, Cash... They were the first blood indicators. So that is that is a big improvement in your book that they were able to just capitalize on the first bloods. And immediately, you also have to look at Spur Up with his sniper work. Six and three, and was able to get five non-traded kills. I mean, I would hope a sniper gets non-traded kills, you know? Maybe get a, a one-shot, one kill. But you look over at the side of Wisconsin, and uh, there's a little bit of uh, some work to be done from the side of Chi and Puck, you know, both one and eight. They were, in often times, Cash, I noticed, were the first bloods on their side. Yeah, you just, those are just unacceptable performances from those players. Keys just having an uncharacteristically slow night for these first two maps that we've been through. And so whenever you have Matrix at nine and five, and even Super Sherm, right? Uh, you know, four and seven is not bad, but compared to what the other two players were able to draw up for that map it's just a little bit more of a chance but matrix just needed help there in that search and destroy seven of his nine were non-traded so doing his part but one teammate's not going to be able to get it done especially against a team as team oriented and as good as maverick esports yeah and immediately maverick esports will be leading us in terms of the two there's a lot of interesting details ladies and gentlemen about tonight's matchup Quite a bit of some information we got to relay to you because, well, while you look at the side of Maverick Esports with this win, if they do secure that third map, 
they will be securing the first spot in their pool. They do lose. They will be securing the second slot. But hey, first and second, that's pretty good. But then you had over Wisconsin. A lot more on the line. If they win tonight, they will secure first in their pool. But then if there's a big, big factor, two, two potential timelines here uh, that are reliant on the Iowa team. If they lo- if our boys here from Wisconsin Cod lose tonight and Iowa loses against South Dakota, they will secure the second slot. But with a loss and an Iowa win against South Dakota, they will secure the third spot. Quite a bit of a difference from a win at first to a loss and a win from Iowa. You know, and just really quickly, Iowa are currently 9-2 and two against South Dakota. Or a six and four, so the stats kind of tell you a little bit of a pretext there for you. So you know we've got a bit of an interesting timeline here tonight for the side of Wisconsin. Cod Maverick, though, if they win, they will be securing that top spot. But Wisconsin's got a lot more to work for. They do. You have the potential to not make it out of your round, and of course, if you're Maverick, you're guaranteed to get out. And yeah, you want to win here and get first. But if you're Wisconsin. Really, with a loss, you take your fate out of your own hands. It's up to what Iowa does. And like you had mentioned with their records, Iowa at 9-2, South Dakota at 6-4. and four. I'm going to say Iowa early. You know, something yeah. crazy would have to happen. You're really going to be rooting for South Dakota if you are Wisconsin and you lose this third mode and go down in the series. But based on what those records look like alone, you know, not looking a little bit, not looking any deeper into the stats or anything, I'd say Iowa early. So if you're Wisconsin... This is a really crucial third game mode to take. And as we go over to maps and have a look at what the rest of our night's going to be, it's going to have to be an answer very quickly from Wisconsin on this Tuscan control. And we saw early on with that 250 to 131 loss they suffered earlier. Tuscan, even though it's control and pretty run of the mill, you've got to make rotations. You've got to find a way to rotate from site to site and win those transitional kills. That is something that Wisconsin have not been able to show that they can do tonight. The same thing in the Surge and Destroy. Whenever they had to retake or make rotations around the map, it just seemed like Maverick, they were already one step ahead and then the positioning that they needed to be in to cut off those players and get those kills. So a pretty tall ask of this Wisconsin squad if they want to keep their series hopes alive and if they want to keep the fate of getting out of their own pool in their own hands. It's got to start with a win here, of course, to kick off the reverse sweep, but... It's a pretty big task, and with the way Maverick's yeah. shooting and playing right now, it's oh, yeah. going to be a tough one. Yeah, it is a mountainous effort, I would say, because with Maverick being currently 7-0 and on control, Wisconsin, while also having that stat line, I mean, come on, Cash, the proof is in the pudding. What have we seen these first two maps? A 250-131, to 131, a 6-2 stat line for Search and Destroy. Maverick are our current leader current leaders in the map as we head into this Tuscan control. I I have my hopes, but I am also a realist in terms of this matchup tonight, Cash. I agree. And as I mentioned earlier in that head to head, Wisconsin, those seven and own control, five of those seven have gone to around five. So you can look at that from both sides in, in a bad sense. They've won all of them sure but they've been pushed the distance for more than half of those maps and then on the good side you look at it as hey we've been in game five situations or round five situations in control five times out of the seven times we've played it that puts us in prime position to be able to know how to handle those situations and obviously they know how to close those round fives out so you can really look at it from either side and it's going to be quite the coin toss here as maverick kicked things off on offense wisconsin big defense to come out and win yeah, a lot on the line here tonight as we hop in. And, well, you can immediately see Maverick very nicely done. Secure the first tick within the first 30 seconds. And, well, second tick being secured as well. And the stacking of the site comes in. There's a nice little two, no, two stack there. But there will be some shots coming in from the back. Bit of a pinch coming in. But Super Sherm, he keeps the team alive here. But T. Bamith is able to rotate in. But will get taken out. So, the movement towards B has begun, and, well, Puck's the one to contest it, and, well, he's going to be successful with a nice two pieces there. And uh, there you go, Maverick, unfortunately, we're not able to capture that. A, we'll need to reconcile, reconsider their efforts and just re-max out in terms of the movement. 
that's how those first 30 seconds started. I thought it was gonna be pretty dangerous. Really, I really thought Maverick were gonna walk away with over two minutes of time left. I mean, I, granted, they do get that here, but I thought it was gonna be a little more devastating with that opening break. Wisconsin are able to hold on and able to shut down the rotation over to be early now. They have to hold on for two minutes, up three lives, so in a somewhat favorable position if they have to be able to do this, but it's important that these players on the cutoff make the kills that they need to, and Super Sherm's getting a lot of info in the back saying these players are coming through church. That's where this first hit's going to be. Now we're looking at Puck as the cutoff man over at P5. Yep, P5 being a, a bit of an interest spot here, and well, Team Mammoth very nicely done gets key and opens up the lane for the team, and... Well, you see this nice little three-point movement of these players, and we saw how this played out in the hard point, and there you go, and very nicely done, a repeat of the efforts, and well, B will be uh, starting to get progressed here. Key spawns back up, immediately looking for these players. First tick has been secured, but he will get taken out by Spur Up. If there's one man I want in this hill by himself, it's Spur Up. The man has been different tonight, slaying out in multiple categories, and well, he's keeping the team alive here, and as I say, he does get taken down. Trying to keep the team alive, but I love the response from Wisconsin. Whenever player gave the call out that was watching that flat push, the three players were coming through that side to B. You saw player seven who was super sure on the tank. All the arrows that were spawning up turned and flooded towards the hill. They gave up that church side knowing, hey, if three players are here, maybe we'll let one slip through the back. So they've successfully been holding off these hits. Now an opening in the hill with only one player left spawned up and one take of progression secured. They've got to make another break, but they've been doing it thus far. If you're, if you're with Wisconsin, uh, a clean four down does not help though. And now they've really got to group up and try to get this done. Yeah, and you can see right now it's currently being progressed. White Dog, very nicely done, little two piece there. And there you go. B will be secured in a very, very methodical approach. It was a bit dominant towards the beginning, but there was a bit of some interference. Wisconsin was able to respond back a bit better. But hey, Maverick just overall being that stronger team cam. And there you go. They will take an offense in a very rare scenario. We rarely see that cash. I think on Tuscan a bit more often than Gavitu, but just control period, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Offense is definitely the one that's far less likely to be won. And Maverick come out and do it. So they set themselves up well to, well, if they can turn the tides of slaying in their favor, really secure themselves defensive rounds if it has to go the distance, but ultimately push this towards 3-0 if they can. And with a clean hill on A, or a clean push off of A from this opening break, they're sitting pretty well. They got the player that slipped through church, cut off, and now all these players advancing up across the 50-yard line of this map. They're looking to work a uh, spawn trap. Got spawn trap here coming into effect. Bladesy very nicely done. Opens up the lane. Now makes his position towards it. White Dog sees this player puck and well, that was a bit of a scary one. The auto mantle unfortunately almost got his aim off, but hey, he was able to get that kill. T Mammoth sees the rat shots, is able to regen in time, and well, he's feeling fresh now and spur up. Ooh, 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 very nice movement out of him to be able to stop that middle movement. And will be will be our destination. And T-Bamoth, well, he's running, he's running the sentry for it. He's not letting any players pass through. A clean break, unable to come through on offense for Wisconsin thus far, where they were holding off on defense. They've just been unable to answer for the positioning that Maverick have taken. They're just sitting it off angles or on their fountain and on their tree, different areas where they just aren't expecting them to be pushed up to. So uh, not as aware on offense of where these players could be at and just unable to get footing out of their spawn. You see a couple players oh trickling my. out of the time, but <laughs> players from Maverick Esports are there for the cutoff and they're winning all of the gunfights. Now it's 11 seconds left and no progress and a uh, completely white kill feed. Yeah, Wisconsin's back to the drawing board. Yeah, they are definitely back to the drawing board for this third round because Maverick very dominantly showed us, hey, when it comes to the slaying power, we work as a team and we make it happen. So they will take that second round of very dominant defense. That, that, that was unprecedented. I did not know that Maverick had it in them to not only just stop the aggression from either side because you know it's one thing to get four down on one side then not be able to calculate the the movement towards the other they were able to not only you know split their efforts but just cooperatively dominate and so they took that round in dominant fashion and are already ready to go onto this a side and great utility usage so far 
I love the players just playing for info, spur up, trying to get some streaks rolling, but maybe the timing is caught by the player for Wisconsin. Spirit's going to challenge out and not see the player on the ground, so a good way for Wisconsin to prevent any big streaks from coming in, and now they hold off this initial hit to A. They've got some work to do over at P5 to cut these players off before making a B hit, a big gunfight going down over on the A side. That's going to grant Maverick clearance to slowly start earning more progression, and now Wisconsin have a decision to make because they're split between two hills. Yeah, the effort being a bit of a divided one right now, but Team Bammoth still making plays towards the middle of the church. Very nicely done. Second tick being secured at A, and well, Team Bammoth's work here is going to be essential for them to just secure the hill. Even that middle movement, Bladesy stopping that one. So you just have an all-around great team shielding the effort at A. With only one player on it, they were still able to contest and get it done. Now the movement goes towards B, and well, you're going to have to figure out these spawns first if you're going to want to be able to replicate that effort you just committed at A. And just to kind of zoom things out and have a look at things tonight, I mean, Maverick Esports, they are one point up three lives away from beating Wisconsin Cod in a 3-0 fashion. If you're Wisconsin, players you were looking to lead you in that respawn department, Key, who's now maybe warmed up here a, a little bit too late, just uh, an effort from Wisconsin that wasn't completely there on all fronts. Players with uncharacteristically slow starts, and you got to give credit to Maverick, of course, for having the ability to shut these players down, know who's going to be good on the side of Wisconsin, and play around that, but really all players for Maverick, we've been calling out just about everyone's name here at some point tonight, whether it be from slaying or rotations, different things like that. They look really good and sitting at 10 and 0, they want to show why they're going to be one of the, we're going to be one of the best teams going into stage two and Wisconsin now with the player being out of the lobby, going to chalk this one up possibly. And uh, yep. yeah, it's one where now your face yeah. out of your hands. Now you've got to figure out, you know, first you've just got to hope you can get out of your pool. But if you do, given the teams that are also coming out in this division, you've got to figure out a way to uh, get things done and find a way to compete a little bit better. Mavic right now putting on a clinic and, well, playing sharp as can be. Exactly. And, well, the mental's chalked currently on the side of Wisconsin with that player dropping out and 12-5 and five in terms of lives and, well... Like you said, Maverick know how to put on a show, and well, they're currently leading very strongly across the board. The 3-0 being very, very close here in this map, and with three lives left on the side of Wisconsin, no response it is looking very bleak to even consider a comeback. It would need to be an angelic blessing from above. And as I say that, Maverick dominantly take the series 3-0 with a dominant 3-0 in the control. The series just flopsided from the start. Maverick came out firing on all cylinders. I know we focused a bit on Wisconsin and what they needed to do to come out here and pull off the win, but Maverick did exactly what they needed to do to come out and win. They came out knowing all four players could fire on all cylinders and carry this team to a win. Yeah. Uh, like we said, all of these players at some point or another were having miraculous plays around the map, uh, just of significance in any of the modes. So. They really look sharp and like a well-oiled machine and taking that in a 3 0 fashion after showing, you know, a potential oh vulnerability or weakness, they come out and win in a dominant fashion to show, hey, that was a fluke, that was a mistake. We're we're gonna only look to be correcting that. And after tonight, yeah, I'm convinced that they're confident and ready to rule. Yeah, Maverick Esports are very much uh, a well we're just rigged, tested through the trials of Call of Duty and that machine is very much a just a strong one indeed and well they're going to be going into stage two in an undefeated manner here and well wisconsin we're going to have to wait for that iowa game to see if they're going to be second or third but hey what a great match it was um regardless it's really maverick esports just just playing the beat of the game and well you know it, it's it's just a bit of a bit of a tough one overall and while we get ready for this next uh, matchup here to end the night, uh, we'll be taking a short break. Get yourselves ready. Head to Twitter. Let us know what you guys think. We appreciate each and every one of you guys for coming out, and we'll see you just shortly.